we've been through three talks, although they were all amazing. I think you would be like pretty tired right now. When I first saw the Telex Sokomo High School fire, I texted my dad right away, saying, Dad, you're doing a TEDx event. I'm super excited, and I really think this might be my chance to shine. And my dad replied, you would even pass the first round. And I was like, yeah. <laughs> You're right. Now, my dad and I are in a very good relationship. In fact, we understand and know each other pretty well. I wasn't, or at least I felt like I wasn't a creative person, and my dad knew this too. My strengths were more like research skills and, and contemplation, a little far from originality and creative thinking. Anyhow, I applied for the TED Speaker role, because although I might not make it, I was still going to try. The speaker selection was split in two rounds, the preliminary round and the final round. At the preliminary round, we need to read the applicants or evaluate it by our scripts. And at the final round, we need to give a five minute speech based on our scripts. So I started to brainstorm for the ideas worth spreading and decided to write my script on how filming famous TED Talks influenced my life. I'm sure you're all familiar with it. It is like the mind of massive procrastinator, the power of inevitability, new school skills, creativity, you know, and on and on. I was feeling pretty proud of how my script turned out. It was witty and relatable, and I submitted it. The next day, I got an email from the host, and you know what? I passed the preliminary round. Take that, Dad. Feeling super energized, I prepared for the next and final round, giving a five minute speech of the script. I spent a couple of days practicing and memorizing it. But the more I ran over my script, some uncomfortable realization dawned on me. You see, my script, which I wrote so eagerly, was not that creative enough. The whole script was enjoyable to read, but the essence of the idea was lacking creativity. So half the witness and freshness was not originating from me, but from their original ten ideas that I wrote about. This cold realization about my idea's worth hit me hard on the head. I was suddenly back to the conversation I had with my dad, but this time with a much better formula of, I'm just not that creative. I think everyone can relate to this kind of experience, the excruciating notion of lacking creativity and originality, leading to self-doubt on whether it's ever going to be possible for us to foster an original creation. But, but, I was able to break loose of the ever gloomy thoughts and fears of incompetence. And through that experience, I developed a model of creativity that I today like to share with you. This model is to help you gain a better understanding of yourself and maybe even a breakout from your self-doubts too. In this model, I identified four steps, a consumer, an active participator, a demi-creator, and finally, a creator. First, a consumer. This is when we consume the materials that are already out there. For example, the see there's a horse, like here. And if there's a person who's viewing the horse, he or she would be a consumer. No touching the horse, no talking to the horse, just simply observing the existing horse. I too started off as a consumer in this whole TED journey, as a viewer of TED. I watched their videos and enjoyed them. After the first step, we go to the next one, which is an active participator. This is when we add a few of our own thoughts to what we perceive. Active participators, as you can guess, are more active than consumers. They can keep up with the horse example. Rather than just observing the horse, they would engage themselves in activities, like stroking the horse, and try fully experiencing the note, like researching facts about horses. As I said at the beginning, this is a creativity model, and even in the active participator stage, people create something. The work of an active participator is essentially a replica of something that pre-exists, like this reverse model that is made of a real horse. However, a bit of them, a bit of the active participator's own uniqueness, can't be spotted in their outcome, like a change of texture based on how the person interpreted the real thing. I had my own active participator phase too, when I was preparing for the speaker application, I practically studied TED Talks. I read books on how to give a TED Talk and took notes from talks that became famous. You see, that's how I came up with my speech topic for the preliminary round, how famous TED Talks changed and influenced my life. Of course, 
I was spending hours and hours just analyzing those bright ideas. The root of my so-called creative idea was bound to be dead. Moving on, the next stage is a demi-creator. A demi-creator would combine information to make something novel. It's kind of like building out of Lego blocks. You see, the blocks themselves, the information themselves are pre-made, but the combined result is something that is entirely new. Now, if we go a step further, we can find ourselves at the ultimate step of this creativity model, the creator. These two steps, the demi-creator and the creator, they sound pretty alike, don't they? The difference between them is that a creator creates based on one's own original idea or insight, while a demi-creator simply puts one and two together. So, if a demi-creator adds men and put together to create a symporus, a creator would devise a unicorn, a whole new magical creature with, with a horn sprouting from his forehead. As you can see, they're both creations, but the level of frivolity is quite distinct. Now that we went over the whole model, Let's talk about the big questions. So how can we be a creator? Hmm. The standard answer to this question would be follow the sequence, starting from a consumer, to an active participator, to demi-creator, and finally a creator. But then come the next question. Would it be possible for us to jump over some stages? It would be great if everyone can just leap from a consumer straight to a creator, right? You see, that was exactly what I was trying to do during my pet preparation. Now, do you all remember my devastating realization of lacking creativity? We're coming back to that now. You see, what I theorized is that the reason I felt so much dissatisfaction and failure was that I was aiming to be a creator when I was yet only ready to be a demi creator. As you remember, I already went over the consumer and active participator stages of pet watching their videos, analyzing their talks. But the thing is, when I started to write my own pet script, I thought I was ready to now conjure up an original idea, assuming I had a creator outfit. However, the actual result I forged was a patchwork, a combination of pre-existing ideas. Basically, I worked on the demi-creator. And I was so miserable by the gap between the innovative idea I imagined and the idea compound that I made. Now, I'm not saying that the combination that any creator creates is insignificant. On the contrary, I want to state that during the combining process, experiencing a demi creator is a required condition, an essential condition to be a creator. This brings us back to the initial question of, can't we jump over some stages? Through my whole experience unintentionally trying to beat the stage descriptor for Ted, I realized that every preceding step of a certain stage is a precondition of it. We need to consume, obtain information first, then actively analyze it, and try combining this and that, these and those together to develop our insights and ideas that will lead to an original creation. If one step is unaccomplished, it will likely lead to unsatisfying results. However, it's hard to acknowledge the stage we're in, and this often leads to overestimation which may result in a bit in the water of dissatisfaction. Now, quick explanation in the water of dissatisfaction. Carefully look at the steps of the slide. They kind of look like stepping stones, don't they? Now, everything's fine if you move stone to stone, but if you try to jump over some stones, like skipping stages in the model, then splash into the water you fall. In this case, into the water of dissatisfaction. Long story short, if you try to unduly skip stages, you get disappointed in what you created because it'll likely not meet your expectations. That's why it's so hard to spot people who are confident that they're creative because we all get a taste of dissatisfaction with our ideas and this leads to self-limiting. Thoughts like, I'm just not that creative genius, start prevailing in society. And now, we're facing a not creative, not fun future in front of us. So, what should we do? The easiest answer is already laid out. Instead of leaping from one stage to another, take all steps, one by one diligently, believing that creativeness is achieved progressively. And I do believe that proceeding step by step is the key to original creation, because, well, I experienced it. Through my tough demi-creator experience, I finally developed my own insight of creative thinking 
and now here sharing this idea with you as a creator. Before I end this talk, I want to emphasize why it's even more important and beneficial for you to hear me out now. Yes, I'm talking to you all, my fellow students. Although the creativity bottle can present a wonderful surprise to just about anyone, I mean really students could get the most out of it. You see, the school era is one of the most demanding times for creativity. Every paper and assignment urges the student to show something new and unique. But there is a lot of brain racking moments for creativity. And it's so easy to submerge into those insecure thoughts like, I'll never be creative, like I did in my conversation with Dad. But what's delightful is that it's also true that students, young people in general, have more flexibility when it comes to their self-image compared to their older companions. Even though they may think, I'm not creative for a moment, they get a plausible explanation on why they're still getting dissatisfactory results. They try to create once more, further reaching their creative potential, further reaching your creative potential. What I essentially want to say through this creativity model is, they're not limited, they're just not there yet. I now know that I could be that creative person, and I know that you could too. I sincerely hope anyone who has seen failure or insufficiency in their creation before could feel this creative confidence. We are not incapable of original creation. We just need more experience as a consumer, an active participator, or a demonstrator. Let us try creating once more. I'm sure we'll get there soon. Thank you.